Hey up lads and lasses, Dan Fire here, back again with some more Infinite Lagrange, and we are doing another ranking video. So, I've done the best I can with trying to get screenshots that sort of work, and then label them, and then import them into Tier Maker. And as you can see, it's not quite worked out as I intended, but it's probably about as good as I'm going to get, which is a little unfortunate. Um, I will try and work on this a little bit more, uh, see if I can get a bit more information on the screen for you guys, but it is quite small regardless. Um, if you have any ideas on how to make this maybe slightly better, uh, do let me know because I, I generally can't work this one out. Um, anyway, so as we know, the modules on Battle Cruisers can be extremely powerful and in other cases absolutely not utterly worthless. A lot of people like to take the tech points instead of choosing the modules that are terrible. So this is to sort of help them out a little bit and go, well, this module's crap, so you might as well just take the tech points. In my opinion, you should always take the modules, and that's due to the fact that it removes the module from the pool, which means next time you do get the ship uh, as a duplicate, uh, you won't get find that module ever again. So it's, you're just going to get one of the modules that you actually want eventually. It's a little bit more long-winded potentially that way, but it reduces the RNG, uh, and reducing RNG in any game is paramount pretty much in my opinion. So yeah, without further ado, we shall jump into, uh, yeah, into it. So in the A1 slot, we have the the base weapons that come with the ship. But I wanted to include these because they are an option that you can choose from. Uh, well, you won't get them from a box, but you may have you know A1, A2, A3, and you want to choose between A1, A2, A3. So A1 is the uh, large cannons. They are going to go into B tier. They've got okay dpm at 6300 dpm they're pretty poor at hitting things i've noticed um although saying that the rail guns are even worse but the rail guns have higher dpm so uh, they're kind of similar sort of ratings so anyway yeah they're okay you get them they're free they're going in b a2 um, I'm going to put them in uh, the top of B as well. They are the rail guns. Now, the rail guns are pretty good against large, and they will hit large for a decent amount. They have about 450 damage per shot, and I think it's about 10,000 DPM. And they're, they're pretty good at that point, but again, like I said, they, they struggle to hit things below, I think even cruisers, they have a bit of a hard time hitting. Anything below that, they really, really struggle with. Um, so it, it's kind of like the top end of B and the bottom end of A really for the A2 slot. Uh, but yeah, nothing really particularly stand out. Um, well, I, I guess I'll move it up to A. It's the bottom end of A. It's like right in the, the middle. It's like the... Um, anyway, so we have the A3. This is the energy turrets. This is far, far better. It's got a lot more damage potential. It's accurate, so it actually hits. The hit rate's decent on it, with about 8,000 DPM. And again, energy-based, which just means it's overall going to be better off in most situations in comparison to literally any of the other ones, A2 and A1. It's also target small first, which is actually quite useful because if you can take out the likes of the destroyers and stuff, you severely limit the damage output of enemy fleets and mixed fleets. And again, you do find later on in servers, a lot of people run frigate destroyer only fleets. Um, so it does work out quite well in those situations, having the, uh, the small targeting on here. And again, when it does target the big ships, it's energy weapons, it's okay, it does the damage, and yeah, it, it's just a better jack of all trades, and versatility is really, really good on the ST-59, uh, so I do recommend that. In B, 
slots now. We have B1. This is the cluster torpedoes. They are definitely better than the rail guns, in my opinion. They can produce quite a decent amount of damage. Um, I think mine maxed out around 12,000 DPM, somewhere like that by themselves. Uh, they're very similar to the Spears uh, torpedo system that it has that I can't remember off the top of my head. Mine launcher or something like that, I think it's called. Um, so yeah, it's actually really good in slot and i definitely give it the A tier because I don't think it quite makes... Uh, top s tier and that's because of the b2 slot b2 is the hangar you turn your relatively useless in most situations st59 into a carrier it carries four medium fighters which is actually pretty solid it can't carry large which is a little bit unfortunate but if you remove the front row uh, strategy off the main armor system, so this sits in mid row with all its armor and its energy resistances, and you've got you know a couple of spores or something on here, this really does help out the fleet quite a bit, and it actually brings some usefulness to the ST59 that it's you know lacking because it's anti large isn't as good as any of the other battle cruisers. It's anti-small, isn't as good as any of the other battle cruisers. Being able to carry in, you know, some relatively decent aircraft on it, say you bring spores or mistral or something of that sort of caliber, it does make it in substantially more viable and running it as a like armored carrier uh, does quite well for it. We then have the B3 slot. These are the spotters, uh, spotter UAVs. So the spotter UAVs will randomly choose a target and provide them a hit rate bonus. Uh, the hit rate bonus isn't particularly great, about 10% to 15% from testing, uh, which doesn't sound, which sounds like a decent amount. But if you consider it maybe landing on something like an ST59 where it can't hit things anyway and you're just going 10 to 15 percent of can't hit things anyway it doesn't really add up to much which is a bit unfortunate it'd be nice if the bonus here was uh the lower the hit rate the more spotting and the the higher the hit rate it becomes and then it would definitely see a lot more viability i'd potentially even use it at that point being able to buff your own ships to increase the hit rate on low hit rate ships would be fantastic uh, unfortunately, that is not the case. We then move on to C1. Um, I'm actually going to put this into D tier. C1 is the additional armor, the one that gives you uh, HP bonus. It's just nowhere near as good as uh, C2 or C3 in this uh, in this ranking. That I'm doing it's it just doesn't even compare to him really yes having some extra HP is kind of like having more resistance uh, more energy resistance and more armor overall but at the same time you're only going to be sporting 30% energy resistance and uh, about 300 odd armor and the extra HP is about 50k or something like that and it does bring it up to a nice level but the lower armor and everything just it doesn't add up uh, to being more viable in running the heavy armor or the EM armor. So we then move on to C2 and that is the energy armor. It is S tier for me. It allows you relative sort of relatively decent armor while still upping its energy resistance to an absurd amount of um, energy resistance i believe it hits like 85 percent energy resistance or something around there so you're just literally mitigating the damage from ctgs ios eternal storms anything that really wants to hit this thing has to is most likely going to be an energy uh vetus bees or energy based weapons and this thing really just 
mitigates the damage output that they can actually do to your ship, which is absolutely great. Again, you can still roll the 300 uh, odd armor here with a huge energy resistance, so it's still tanking quite well with a decent amount of armor. It's not as good as having, say, the heavy armor, but at the same time, uh, I'd love to see them have like a heavy energy resistance that had both, that'd be amazing. Then the ST-59 would be really, really useful in a lot of fleets, but even if it had poor damage output, if it had like heavy armor and the energy armor, that'd be amazing. The heavy armor, a little bit less good. It's a bit more situational. Uh, well, both are situational, but the energy shield's generally gonna do you quite well co considering fleet compositions nowadays revolve around Vetus Bs, CTGs, uh, when they're large anyway. And then even lower on, you're seeing Ruby Ions, Tauruses, you know. So the big damaging ships are energy. Energy armor is going to be better in most situations, and that's why I'm going to put the heavy armor into A. Yes, getting up to 730 armor is nutty. Like, it's a lot of armor, and it takes a fleet that is primarily uh, kinetic based damage, a hell of a lot of damage to try and get through this, being the fact that this is mitigating the majority of damage. And then on top of that, even the big damage uh, weapons, you know, the Connemara Chaos's 1600 damage uh, railgun, I think it believes it goes up to about 1900, but you, you're basically thirding the damage off like the really big weapons in this game as well, which is pretty decent. So, you know, it's not quite as versatile as say running the energy armor, but it's still very, very good. We then have the M1. This is the base railgun that comes with the ship. I'm gonna put it into B tier. It's okay in most situations. It has okay hit rate. It does okay damage. There's nothing particularly special about it. It's very, very middle of the road and uh, I'll stick it in B for that reason. The M2 slot, I'm gonna put into A. Yes, it's lower DPM. And yes, it's a lower alpha strike than the M1 slot. However, it's pretty decent at hitting most ships. It's got a better hit rate. It's torpedoes, so it's in direct fire. Oh wait, no, it's not torpedoes, is it? That's the other one. It's not in torpedoes, it's just quad uh, rail guns uh, with a much faster rate of fire. And it generally just does better because it's at hit rates increased uh, because of it being the smaller weapon size. So it'll have better time hitting cruisers and below destroyers where the M1 slot really struggles uh, against anything below cruisers. So it does um, fit a bit more of a versatile role than the M1 slot. Again, if you are seeing mostly cruisers and stuff, the M1 slot's probably gonna do you better. <clears throat> we then have the M3 slot. I'm also gonna put this into A tier. Uh, it's due to the fact that it's just a better M1 for all intents and purposes. And it's bigger alpha, better DPM, its hit rate goes down a bit, but if it is against the cruisers and stuff, it's gonna hit harder. Um, I think the M2 I prefer personally. I think it's slightly better hit rate and versatility, just means it's more usable in more fleet designs and fleet types. So, there we go, your S are the A3 slot, the pulse turrets, and the medium hangar, and the EM armor. That's a nice little combination. If you mix that in with the M2 or the M3, you've got a pretty solid uh, ST-59 setup. That'll do well in pretty much most situations. Again, ST-59, it's no DPM king or anything like that. It's not even close. So do bear in mind that you're running this ship more for its tanking capabilities, and if you do have the hangar, you're running it more as a, a pseudo carrier, as it were. So there we go, hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time.